Hey guys, it's Sam from DIY Huntress, and today I'm going to show you how I made this live edge cabinet with adjustable shelving. Let's get started. I've been holding onto a pretty awesome slab of oak for a while and I knew that I wanted to use it for a really special project and this project felt like the one. So I decided to get it out of my little storage area on the side of my shed shop and get started. Now one of the things I just want to mention before I start this build is that the dimensions of my build definitely depended on how large this slab was. But if you're looking to do a build that is similar, you may want to check out the details on this build and how to make one based on your own slab by clicking on the link below this video and visiting my website. Now this particular slab was a little larger than what I intended to use for the cabinet based on where I was placing the entertainment unit. So I decided to start by measuring where I wanted to trim the slab and then use my track saw to cut it down to its final depth. But since the slab was so thick, I did actually have to turn it over and make the same exact cut on the other side as well in order to get through the entire thing. And once the slab was cut down to its final size, I then brought the piece that I wanted to use for the cabinet into my shop where I started to flatten it to prepare it for the build. One thing you might be noticing as I'm putting the slab into my workshop is that it is wobbly and that's because the bottom of the slab was not level. So I used a shim to level out the bottom of the slab and then used a power hands planer to start leveling out the top of the slab. And once the top of the slab was nice and flat, I then flipped it over and then repeated the same process on the bottom of the slab as well. A little tip, if you're looking to flatten a slab like this one but don't have a power planer, another option is to use a belt sander or even a router with a sled. I personally love my little handheld planer. I used it on my dining room table, but again, if you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. You could flatten a slab using a sander and a lot of patience. Once I was done flattening the slab, I did have to stabilize it. And what that means is that there were some giant cracks and voids that were causing the slab to be a little wobbly or unstable. So I did this by taping up the bottom of the slab and any voids that went through the entire piece of wood. And then spent a couple of days pouring some epoxy resin into the voids using a chosen color pigment to make it look like it was a natural part of the wood. While the epoxy resin dried and cured over the next couple of days, I did take some time to start cutting some three quarter inch plywood into the cabinet pieces. And as always, you can find the full list of dimensions as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial for this project by clicking on the link below this video. But essentially in order to make this project a little easier to digest via video, the first step in making the cabinet was to just cut out the legs. And I wanted the legs to look super beefy. So I basically just cut out four side panels that I'm gonna laminate together into thicker panels panels later. And as you can see, you can use various different saws for this project. I used a track saw, a circular saw, a table saw, a miter saw. You do you. You use what works for you. It's going to be awesome back to business. Basically, in order to laminate two pieces of wood together, you have to use a lot of glue and spread it around really evenly and also basically use every clamp that you can find in your workshop, your dad's workshop, and Home Depot, and probably the entire world. So what I did is I just used a ton of glue on one panel and then took another three quarter inch panel, placed it on top of that panel, and then clamped everything together nice and tight. I tried to do my best to apply even pressure to every major area of the panel, and that also included me having to use a little anvil in the center as well, but that's just what I had on hand and it totally worked. I then repeated the same exact process on the other two pieces of three quarter inch plywood that I cut out to make the second bulky leg. And because I didn't have a second anvil for this one, I had to get creative and just use a heavy tool kit. After letting the panels sit overnight, I came back the next day and started to remove the clamps. And the most annoying part about this was honestly putting the clamps away afterwards because I used so many clamps. But overall, it was totally worth it. The panels glued up so nicely and I was able to trim them down to their final dimensions using my table saw and my miter saw. Once those two laminated side pieces or leg pieces were done, it was time to start cutting out the rest of the pieces that I had planned using three quarter inch plywood. And that included two really long shelves, some shelf dividers, and some adjustable shelves that will be going inside of the cabinet. But as I mentioned before, if you check out my blog, you'll find a full list of materials as well as a step-by-step -step plan for this project and that'll lay everything out. But at this point, there were a lot of pieces and I got confused. And so it was time to start labeling everything. And I basically looked like a mad woman. Okay, top and bottom shelves, cabinet shelves, dividers, no, wait. top and bottom shelves, cabinet shelves, dividers. okay, label it, cab dividers, okay, all right, let's do this. I decided to go with pocket hole joinery for this cabinet build because I actually really enjoy working with pocket hole joinery. 
you can use whatever joinery you would like to use in your own shop if you choose to do a build like this but this just worked really well for me and basically i started by just drilling pocket holes into the tops of those two leg pieces and then i adjusted my pocket hole jig for the thinner three quarter inch pieces and drilled holes into two of the ends of the longer shelf pieces as well as the divider pieces but to make life easier there are pocket hole diagrams included with my plans before assembling any of the pieces, I did add some iron on edge banding to the plywood and this basically hides the ugly part of the plywood and makes it look like a solid piece of wood. Now here's the thing, in hindsight, because it's 2020, I would not have used edge banding on this project and I'll explain why a little later, but basically if you're painting and not staining the project, you may not want to use edge banding, but if you're thinking of staining a project and wanting it to look like solid wood, totally go for edge banding. In any event, I added the edge banding using a hot iron and then I trimmed away any of the excess using a special razor that I just got at Home Depot and then used some sandpaper to knock down the edges and make it look like a seamless piece of wood. And once all the edge banding was in place on those solid pieces of three quarter inch plywood, I then began to assemble the base of the cabinet. Because I'm leaving a three quarter inch gap in the front of these long shelf pieces for the doors to sit flush and inset into the cabinet, I did use a spacer when attaching the long shelf pieces to each leg. I also used a spacer on the bottom of the cabinet to make sure that the spacing was consistent and used a carpenter square to ensure that everything was square when assembling. Once I was happy, I then used wood glue and pocket hole screws to attach the two legs together with that shelf piece in the middle. And drum roll please, because next up I made a pretty big mistake and basically I started to assemble that top shelf piece onto the cabinet and was super stoked about how square it was and beautiful it was, but then very quickly realized that the slab was not going to be able to get screwed into the top of the cabinet if that shelf was in place. After undoing all of my beautiful work, I took the slab and took all the tape off of it and cut it down to its final size and then brought it on over to the cabinet as it was and installed it to the top of the cabinet using pocket hole screws and wood glue. At this point, it was really important that everything was super square, otherwise the cabinet doors won't fit well later, so I got a little obsessive about triple and quadruple checking for square as I installed the top of the piece. But once everything looked good, I then reinstalled that top shelf piece, which will hold all of like the media stuff and the entertainment consoles using a spacer, some wood glue, and pocket hole screws. I then installed those two divider pieces, one up top and also a larger one on the bottom. Now the one up top, I did have to use glue and brad nails in order to attach because it was a pretty tight fit, but the one on the bottom, I used glue and pocket hole screws and between these two pieces, it really held the entire cabinet together and kept it really sturdy. And once I was super happy with everything, it was then time to add the edge banding to those outer wider leg pieces as well and it looked really nice. One thing that I really wanted this cabinet to have was adjustable shelving, so I used my Craig shelf pin jig here to make some shelf pin holes that I'm going to be putting small brackets into later, and then I can adjust the shelves as needed based on my storage needs down the line. I've used this jig a lot and I actually really like it. Basically, all you have to do is just add it to your surface and then it comes with the drill bit and the collet so that you already have the automatic depth to stop your holes at. The only tricky thing was that that center divider is more inset than the legs were, so I did have to use a spacer in order to get the holes to line up the right way. And once those holes were drilled, the cabinet portion was done and it was time to move on to the cabinet doors. I started cutting the frames for the doors out of 1x4s on my miter saw, but very quickly realized that I made a big mistake. Aww, that's awkward. I did something wrong here. This has to be cut in half. What did I do? I think these were supposed to be 1x2s, not 1x4s. Okay, so I'm going to rip these down to 2 inches wide. If you couldn't tell by the full-blown conversation that I was having with myself in this moment, I basically needed 2 inch wide cabinet frame pieces instead of the 1x4 pieces, so I brought all of the pieces to my table saw and ripped them down to a true 2 inch in order to fit the hinges. I then decided in this moment that since I would be painting the cabinet doors instead of staining them, that I was going to cut grooves into one side of each of the frame pieces, and then gradually move the guide of my table saw over very very slightly until that groove was wide enough to fit a quarter inch piece of plywood. 
And again, since I'm painting the cabinet, I will be using wood putty to hide whatever grooves are showing once the frame is assembled. But basically I did this this way because I don't have a router table or a really safe way to drop the cut onto my table saw. Once all of those frame pieces for the cabinet were ready to go, I then cut some quarter inch plywood into the proper size for the panels and then attach the panels to the frames using wood glue and clamps. I then allowed those to dry and then began to fill in any of the openings in the doors as well as the cabinet using wood putty and let that dry overnight as well. Once everything was dry and ready to go, it was time to give every single nook and cranny of this piece a really good sanding to prep it for paint and finish. I then propped the cabinet off of the floor and prepared it for painting. Now, a couple things here. I decided to try to go for a paint that already had a primer in it, and this was a huge mistake. I really wish that I took the time to prime this piece before I got started painting it because the wood absorbed so much paint and I ended up having to do way more coats than if I just used a primer. Another thing I noticed was that edge banding was a totally sucky idea for painting it because some of the moisture from the paint did get under the edge banding and formed little bubbles. So I ended up having to pierce the bubbles and then re-iron those edge banding pieces in order to make them look nice again. Luckily, my awesome friend April Wilkerson, who is so cool, told me a little trick. And basically, if you use joint compounds on the seams of the plywood, it smooths out super nicely and you don't need edge banding. So that's what I'm gonna do next time. After letting like the bajillionth coat of paint dry on the cabinet, I moved on over to the doors and began to install the hinges. The tricky part about this specific cabinet is that because the legs stick out further than the middle divider, I did have to use inlay hinges on the outside cabinets and overlay hinges on the inside cabinets, but no big deal, they're pretty much installed the same way. To make life easier, I actually didn't finish the cabinet doors before dry fitting them because if they needed to be trimmed or sanded, it's so much easier to do that before painting them. And I installed them by clamping them onto the cabinet in their place. And then once they were in the right spot, I then drilled the hinges into the cabinet. I then repeated these steps for every cabinet door until I was happy with the spacing and made minor adjustments here or there or sanded things or trimmed things and eventually they worked out pretty well. Once I had the cabinets in the order that I was happy with and knew they were hanging the right way, I removed them from the actual cabinet itself, labeled where each one went and then brought them to their own separate paint station where I prepped them for paint. I also took the time here to paint the adjustable shelf pieces and some back pieces, which you'll see in a little bit. One thing that I failed to mention earlier is that in between every single coat of paint, I did do a very light sanding to knock down any grain and to keep the piece looking nice and smooth. But just like the cabinet, the doors also ended up needing about three or four coats of paint before I was really happy with the finish. And for that gorgeous slab, I left the best for last and used a really natural oil-based finish and it just looked so beautiful. Once everything had dried, the first thing I did was install those shelf pins and then put the adjustable shelving into place. I then reinstalled the cabinet doors and was so grateful that I labeled every piece. And to make sure that all the cabinet hardware was installed in the correct place, I did end up making a small jig out of a scrap piece of wood where I used a cabinet hardware jig and pre-drilled some holes, lined those holes up with the cabinet doors and then attached the hardware that way. And then finally, the last step in the process was to install a quarter inch backer board on the back of the cabinets and I did this using brad nails. It's been a long time since I built a cabinet and every time I come back to building one, it is just as intimidating as the first time that I made one, but I could not be happier with the way that this build turned out. Even cooler now that awesome basement spot that I renovated with my dad has an equally as awesome piece to house some entertainment for guests and family members and yet another handmade piece that is in that space. In all honesty, I really just could not be more stoked about this piece of furniture and I can't believe that I made this thing in my tiny little shed shop. But enough about me and how awesome I think this Live Edge cabinet is. I want to know if you guys liked this project and want to see ones like it in the future. Leave me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more DIY projects in the very near future. Thank you guys so much as always for being awesome and for watching my videos and supporting what I do. Until next time, friends. Happy DIYing.